Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Word and Gnome Civ. This is Sharon Oyella, and today we're going to be making a tiny box of chocolates in the shape of a heart. Now, this uh, tutorial is going to show you how to make this heart very easy. You don't need a pattern, you can make it any size. In fact, my last video that I uploaded showed you how to make this little um, tiny trinket box that's hinged, and it's very simple, and I show you how to do a bigger box as well. If you missed that last video, that will be linked in the pinned comment below. All right, my friends, to make our tiny boxes, we need thin cardboard like that found on a cracker box or a cereal box. We're also going to need some cardstock or just a plain piece of paper would also work. A ruler, an exacto blade, a pair of scissors, and all comes in handy, but it's not necessary. And of course, you're going to need some glue, white glue of your choice. I use tacky glue or Elmer's glue, masking tape, uh, paint colors of your choice. You can use a sealer or clear nail polish, a couple of pens. One should be a fine tip or a pencil and a piece of sandpaper or an emery board. And this is for sanding down any painted glossy areas that you're gonna be gluing onto. Once you sand it, make sure to wipe away any of the dust. Uh, to make the chocolates, I'm gonna give you a couple of different ideas, but for this one, I use cloves. To wrap them, I used a ribbon, but you can also use paper. Again, you don't need a pattern and you don't have to measure anything. I'm just giving you the measurements of this one box here, which was two and a half centimeters wide by two centimeters uh, tall from the point to the center of the heart. All right, my friends, we're about to get started. Remember, there are detailed timestamps and links to other projects in the pin comment below. All right, so using the trick that we learned in elementary school, we're going to fold a piece of cardstock. I'm just going to even this up with my scissors here at the bottom. And I'm going to draw half a heart shape against the folded side. And I'm going to cut this out. Once you cut it out, you'll open it up and you'll have a perfect little heart shape. Now I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to transfer that shape to my piece of cardboard. So I'm just going to place my finger on there very firmly so it doesn't slide around and just trace around it. Now carefully cutting around the ink. You want to make this as um, even as possible, right? So we're going to carefully cut around the ink. And there we go, all cut out. We're going to take this piece and we're going to glue it to another piece of cardboard. Make sure to sand down any glossy areas and make sure to spread the glue out evenly across the entire surface. And I'm gonna glue uh, the painted side to this piece here. So it does make it easier for painting later. Now I'm gonna place my clamps on there and you're gonna see the glue has oozed out a little bit. So I just wanna get rid of that. I'm gonna take my tweezers. I'm just going to go around the edge and get rid of that extra glue that has oozed out. And I'll put my clamps back on and I'll leave it sit for about five minutes or so, just until that glue grabs on. Now that it's grabbed on, I can cut around the heart shape again. And the reason why we do these, uh, double up the pieces of these cardboard is because I want to glue sides to the heart shape. So I just need a little bit of a thicker edge to glue onto. So you'll notice when I'm cutting here, I'm not going to force my scissors inside that little lump there. I'm just going to go around what I can do easily and then I'll come back and I'll cut that out. Once I'm done cutting out that little part there, I'm just gonna take my emery board and just lightly sand away any remaining bumps in there. Now I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna glue it to another piece again, but I'm gonna make sure to leave room all the way around to glue sides to. Remember to make sure to um, spread that glue out evenly across the entire surface. I'm gonna place that on there clamp it. If there's any glue oozing out, we're going to get rid of that. And then we're going to let this sit for five or so minutes until that glue grabs on. Now that that's grabbed on, now we can add our sides. And the sides can be any height that you want. You can see here, I'm going to glue that right along here. So that's why we doubled up the cardboard. Okay, so this one here is a half a centimeter. But again, you can make that any height that you wish. I'm just going to help this by bending the shape a little bit. I want to glue it right here from the middle of the heart all around to the bottom. So I'll cut that down and I'm just going to get some masking uh, tape ready here, just little pieces. And I'm going to add my uh, tacky glue right here because this heart is so little. I'm just going to use a paintbrush to get the glue in there so I don't add so much glue around the heart. So I'll just place it in there with my paintbrush. Get rid of the excess there. Now I can place my um, sides on there. And I'm going to use masking tape to hold this in place while the glue 
uh, dries. So placing the masking tape right there, using my thumbnail to push right at the very bottom. So the bottom of the sides is pushed right into the base of the heart. And I'll do that all the way up. There we go. Now we can um, add some glue around the inside edge using the paintbrush. Now on the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing. We just want to make sure that we add glue along the edges where they're going to join. So right here, right along there and there. Make sure to add glue there. So same thing, I'm going to place my side in there and then using masking tape, I'm going to press that right in with my thumbnail at the base so that there's full contact while the glue is drying. And again, glue around the inside edge and we'll leave this dry. All right, now that it's dry, we can remove the masking tape. Just remove it carefully. If it's too sticky, you might want to switch to like frog tape or something. Once you remove the masking tape, now you're going to cut around the heart shape. Remember just to cut around where you can easily get your scissors and then you can always come back and attack the rest of it, which I'm going to do here. At the very bottom, there's a piece sticking out. Just going to cut that free. And then the very center of the heart, I can't get my scissors in there, so I'm going to use an X-Acto blade. I just uh, do what I can there, and then whatever's left over, I'll use my emery board to lightly sand away. Now we're going to make the lid, and I found using a fine tip pen or a pencil will work best. Trace around the bottom of the box, not the top. But when you cut it out, cut just on the outside of the ink, not too far out, just where the ink ends. That way the lid is going to fit perfectly and it won't be too loose. So I just want to make sure that we've got a, uh, a little bit of an edge on the outside, as you can see here. Just a little bit of an edge so that the lid will fit over top. And it looks good, so now I'm going to do the exact same steps that I did for the bottom of the box. I'm going to glue this to another piece. I can leave it sit for a little bit to make that glue grab on, or I can just go ahead and cut around it. You just want to make sure that they don't slide apart as you're cutting. Now I'll take this and I'll glue it to another piece, making sure to leave room all the way around to add sides. So right in the center there. Remove the extra glue if it oozes out around the side. Once that's dry, you can add the edge, and for this other lid that I made, you can see the edge is very narrow, and that was because I took a, a half a centimeter and I split it down the center. Uh, for this box that I'm making here, I'm just going to use the cent or half centimeter height. Again, you can use any height that you wish, as long as it fits over your box. Alright, so I'm just going to test this box out, make sure that the lid fits nicely, and it does. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a uh, black coat first. Uh, you can do any color that you wish. I do black because it kind of moots the color on top. Uh, if you want a brighter red, then I would suggest doing a white base coat first. All right, you also have the option of giving it a little bit of shine, and I did that with this one here using Verithene, which is a water-based uh, crystal clear sealer. Or you can also use a clear nail polish if you don't have sealer. Uh, for this other one, I'm going to use a little bit more of a glittery nail polish. So it's this one right here called Heart of Sass. It's very, very pretty. So let's give this a coat of that. And it only takes one coat. And look how beautiful that is. I really love that glitter, the way the, the uh, light picks up the little bit of glitter in there. Very, very pretty. I didn't do the inside, just did the top and both of the sides. All right, so for the chocolates, I had a couple of different ideas. One was using split peas. I glued halves together and then I painted them burnt umber. And then I took a strip of paper that I had cut down with um, decorative scissors and was going to wrap them in that. But they turned out to be a little bit too thick. So I opted for some ribbon and some cloves here, which were a lot smaller. And the little bulb on top of the clove looks just like a chocolate. So I'm going to cover that with clear nail polish. And that just gives it a little bit of shine. And I thought it looked more like chocolate that way. So I got a bunch of them ready. I was able to paint a bunch and just lay them on the table without worrying about them. Because they had these little bits here. I kind of held them off the table. I'm just going to trim these off. Once those were removed, then I could easily wrap the ribbon around the clove. And then use a little hot, uh, dot of hot glue to hold that together. Now I can trim off the excess. And then I cut off the stem of the clove. And I'll just re rearrange the top of the ribbon here, just to make it look a little bit more open with my awl. And then I'll add a little dot of white glue at the very bottom, and this will hold it in place inside the box. 
And that brings us to the end of another video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you enjoyed watching as well and, and seeing how easy it is to put one of these together without a pattern. I really had fun showing you how to make these and also how to turn those little cloves into yummy chocolates. <laughs> and this one here, I just kept empty. I think I might make some cards or something for the gnomes in the future and they can have a little heart uh, box filled with little love notes or something like that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give that thumbs up, share with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.